Yeah, we're uh, definitely excited about it. Uh, you know, excited to, as long as the weather stays dry for us tonight, we're uh, looking forward to it. And obviously got a great field of cars and obviously NASCAR stars that are going to be participating for tonight. And um, just excited to get going. You know, it's a, you know, it's a, been a task to get all of it put together and everything uh, from, you know, all, all the people that's been involved. So, you know, we always look forward to the day after this race and, uh, you know, it, once it's all over. But, uh, you know, we, we just have a lot of fun this weekend. You know, obviously running three races, uh, we're, we're, we have a really good shot of getting three wins. All right, if you have questions for Denny, let us know. We've got wireless mics for you from Greg and Ashley. Raise your hand, name and affiliation first. We'll start with Joe. Hey, Danny, uh, Joe Manzer, NASCAR.com. Could you just uh, talk about what your reaction to uh, the Bristol, uh, what you know about that, the Bristol repaving, and, and sort of just comment in general on the kind of rash of repavings that seems to be going on right now, what that means for you as a driver? Well, as far as I know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but they're just going to grind the top. Is that what they're going to do? Um, I don't know a whole lot about it because I wasn't in – construction but for a little bit of time when I was younger but there's rebar in there so you can't grind but so much so I don't know I don't think it's going to be much different to be honest with you, what we had um, if anything maybe the grinding will cause for grip and people are going to run up high anyway so uh, who knows what's going to happen um, I you know you want to fix it and, and make it uh, a tough track you need to pave it uh, concrete is not the answer as far as that's concerned but they're in a box they have to you know they're trying to do everything they can I understand that um, because the fans want to change so you know you commend them for trying but it, I think that they're time limited on what adjustments they can really make to that track uh, as far as repavings you know none of us drivers like to see it uh, I talked from a couple guys who ran the, the Pocono test and they weren't overly excited about it uh, after running it so it's just it's one of those things that tracks you know they have to do it or else we're going to have you know a four hour delay in the middle of it because we have a, a pothole in the middle of the track so uh it's just a tough box that our cars are running so fast that they have to limit our speed uh with the tires and and so that's what makes it tough to to race on go back to yanni and then to david newton please and then bob pockers Danny, can you talk about last year winning the short track showdown in the nationwide before the cup race, whereas this year you won the actual cup race last week in Kansas? Compare and contrast the different kinds of momentum those two lend. You know, it's about the same. I mean, it's a little bit more momentum. You, you have uh, you know, definitely a lot of congratulations going into a weekend where you expect to get it after the races are over. Um, but for me, I think that uh, it's a great opportunity for us to start some momentum. We've got some really good tracks coming up for us these next uh, month or so that uh, I feel we have uh, ample opportunities to win multiple races so we're uh, we feel like that Richmond's always been a good track for us no matter what um, you know we're looking more towards in, in the future the Charlottes and Darlington's is tracks where um, you know we, we could pick up wins as well so uh, it, it's good to have the momentum going in here but it's you're only as good as your last race so if we don't win tonight then that momentum from last week is over with, and it's time and it's time to move on. David Newton, ESPN.com. I got two questions for you. One, what's it like when you are having success, and then a teammate like Kyle is not? I mean, a guy that expects to win. I mean, are you guys sharing more now, talking more now, or is it frustrating to him? And you've probably gone through the same thing. And the other question is on Pastrana, kind of what are you expecting out of him in the, the nationwide race? Uh, have you seen his mullet? Are you jealous of his yellow bus or what? <laughs> yeah, you, you really, uh, that's the first thing that all of us drivers see is when we pull in the motorhome lot, you're like, what in the world is that thing right in the middle of it? And uh, so his bus is, uh, it's bright. You can definitely see that. But it's uh, he's going to be a welcome sight to the nationwide series. I think he's kind of a, a breath of fresh air type of guy that, you know, he's outgoing. Um, he's obviously not afraid to take chances. And I, I know personally through talking to him, he's been waiting to run for a long time. And, and just he's been fighting to get those, you know, his, his leg good enough to where he could do it. So, you know, excited to have him, you know, part of uh, uh, all the racing going on this weekend. And I think this is going to be great for us. I think, you know, whether it's going to be the big media buzz that Danica brought to the sport, I doubt, but I think that it's overall, you know, good for our sport to have someone like him in it. 
the, the teammate thing, it's, you know, really up until last week, we all ran about the same. If you look at our, you know, statistics from week to week, you know, we won the race in Phoenix, but me and Kyle have been running pretty close to each other um, for most part of the year. And, uh, you know, really we run, have been running a touch better, I guess, the last two or three races, but, you know, they're, they're struggling to find what they need. Uh, the, the good news for them is that, you know, they know that our cars are capable of running uh, pretty well, so they'll figure it out. I, I talked to really his crew chief as much or if not more than I've talked to, to Kyle himself. So, you know, they get as much information when we talk about our debriefs and everything. And, you know, we feel like we're in a good enough spot now that they're taking a lot of what we say and applying it to their cars. So they're, they're going to get better here pretty soon, this weekend probably. Bob Parker, Sporting News. Uh, Talladega next week. I know the plate's the same. I'm not sure on the pop-off valve and everything, but do you expect the rules to have the same effect that they have at Day had at Daytona, or will there be a different impact of the rules at Talladega? We hope so. Uh, I, I think that we hope it has the same effect. Uh, I think that the pack racing that we had at Daytona was amazing. I thought it was uh, uh, great racing. Um, the two-car tandem didn't win the race that's a good thing um really it was they they got us to where we were running a fast enough speed that handling became somewhat of an issue um so all those things i think will equal good racing at talladega if they keep everything the way that it was danny uh can you talk about how special it is to have your cousin here the impetus for the entire foundation and the entire night tonight and just about what kind of inspiration he gives you for going through what he's been through yeah i mean you know you, you don't realize it and, and even as a kid i you know i always knew uh he has cystic fibrosis but i didn't know what there was to it you know i was too young to really know uh until you know waking up at uh his house one morning and you see uh with a bowl of cereal he's taking all all kinds of these antibiotics and you're like well, what in the world is all that stuff so it affects if it affects people with cystic fibrosis every day um, whether you're healthy uh, or not, it, it affects you. Um, and, and when you have a, a successful lung transplant like he's had, there's always fears of rejection, and, and you still got to go through all the um, uh, right taking up. of the pills and everything. So it's it's it affects you. And everyone knows with that disease that it's they're they're so close to a cure that hopefully, um, you know, any money that we raise this weekend will help. The research, I know that we uh, contributed 150 grand over these next three years to the VCU uh, research lab of the cystic fibrosis. So it's, uh, you know, every little bit of money helps. And, and obviously it's the people that turn out uh, and watch us on TV and, and things like that today that's going to help, you know, get us closer to, to a cure because they are so close. Kevin, go ahead and raise your hand up so we can see you. And when we're done with our availabilities, maybe you can come up and sit with Denny for a couple photos if you wouldn't mind, if that'd be yep. okay. All right, we'll go back here in the back, and then we'll go over to Hank Kurse, and then we'll go to Doug Demons. Ken Childs, RaceRap.com. Denny, you um, won this race last year, but how different is running a late model here compared to running any other car here? And have you had any time to shake down the cars? It's gonna be your first time getting into it this week here. Yeah, we, we got to run a little bit last week. Um, you know, we weren't as blazing fast as what, you know, I, I thought we could be or would be. Um, but, you know, really, that's that's the exciting part of it. It's it's going to be hard. People think it's it, cup drivers are going to just go into a late model race and dominate. It's just not like that now. It's it's um, we would be, in my opinion, more likely to go into a truck series race and and win is we would a late model race uh, at, at any local short track uh, just simply because those guys that run those tracks every single week and, and get tuned in, even though they don't run these, these they're running these cars, it's it's hard to compete with these guys. And so for us, when we have a chance to, to do it, uh, it's a lot of fun. And I know that just talking through Kyle and Joey and Jeff and those guys and Eric, they're, they're excited about the challenge because it is a challenge. It's not a cakewalk coming in here and being competitive. Hank and then Lynn with Doug. Danny, you talked about, Hank Kurz with AP, you talked about your favorite day being the day after the race. How much the last few weeks have you had to add to your plate to kind of get ready for this? And, and, and how much more have you, more responsibility have you had leading up to this? Uh, it's a lot. I mean, really, I, I lean on, you know, everyone from the foundation to the management team to, to help um, as much as possible. They do as much as they can to kind of shield me from 
the, the day-to-day operations of it because it is uh, a headache at times. But, you know, when we have a successful event like we've had these uh, first four years, that's what kind of makes it worthwhile for us to, you know, keep bringing it back and keep giving it every all these late model guys opportunities to, uh, to be a part of it. So uh, as long as we continue to put people in the stands and, and race cars on the racetrack, we're going to keep doing it because obviously we see the difference it's making um, just here right in the local area itself. Hey, Danny, this is uh, um, at, at Talladega next week. Um, uh, since we now have the kind of a hybrid thing with the two-car tandem and the pack racing back, um, how much time do you think you'll spend in the tandem, and, and have you decided yet who you're going to run with? No, well, I've, I haven't had a drafting partner for a couple, about a year now. Um, but uh, so I just kind of running the pack and then you know it worked out well for us at daytona we kind of did our own thing and obviously had a great shot to win so um i i think if the rules stay the same it'll be a pack mostly because the temperatures were just so high at daytona so i think that uh, you really won't have a partner until the very end when you try to link up on the last restart or something like that like we try to do at daytona